Welcome to the list area inside of Herefish. Lists are an important concept. They're vital to automation. It's where you build out the people or the things that you want to go through your automations. So you, this is where you build your audiences or segments. There's a lot of criteria that you can utilize. So you can get uh, as broad as you like or as specific uh, and, and narrow in the audiences that you wanna create. So this is the list overview page. You'll get uh, the first column here is the name of the list. And then you also will see what type of list that's been created. The used in column will let you know which automation that the list is currently getting used in, if any. You can click that hyperlink to find the list details, but then also which automation. The type of list, there's two types. So a one-time list is a static list. So it's a snapshot of that moment in time when you hit save and it doesn't change. An always updated list will change dynamically based upon the data syncing uh, that occurs with your database. The count will let you know how many things or people are matching the criteria that you select and build out. And then you have the ability with this hyperlink below to view specifically uh, who or what uh, those that are matching are. So if you click that, it'll pop you to the contact section inside of Herefish where you can see specifically uh, what or who is matching your criteria. The group functionality is similar to the automation area where you can build custom groups together, create your own. We have some pre-existing ones. And then up in this top section here, you can have your view filtered by any groups that you wanna select. That is saved from your previous uh, login of Herefish. So we'll pull up your, your most recent uh, kind of group preferences. So that's something that stays uh, with your login, but of course you can always customize and change that. And then you have the ability to search the lists. So keyword search, if you have a lot of lists and you wanna find something quickly, that's often the best place to go. And then with the action, you have the same uh, functionality where you can do things en masse. Uh, again, you can kind of add, remove groups or delete lists quickly, which can be helpful if you're trying to clean things up. So you can utilize that. So to add a new list, you're gonna to go to the top right corner here and you hit your add new list. So your first decision is gonna be what type of list you wanna create. So this is going to determine what or who is going to match the criteria that you uh, build in your list. So a candidate or sales contact based uh, list will, will give you the unique candidates or sales contacts that match your criteria whereas submission placement and job based are gonna return those submission places or placements or jobs that match the criteria you select. So it's an important concept. Just to give a quick example of kind of a, a difference between that. Say you have one candidate that's been submitted to five jobs. If you were to do a candidate based list for that, the count would be one because it's one unique candidate. Whereas if you did a submission based list, it'd be five because it's five unique submissions. So that's a, a quick example to kind of illuminate the main difference between the record types. And then the other key component is these, the choice that you make here is also going to be important in the automation area. So if, for example, a candidate based list is only going to be able to be used in a candidate based automation. So you just want to make sure that those uh, kind of reflect the automations that you want to deploy the lists inside. We're going to create a candidate based list here for our, our example. So when we're in here, we are, can name our, our list. And again, this is something that can get edited later. So you can, if you wanna redo naming conventions, you can do so later. We choose the, the type of list that it's gonna be. So a one-time list, again, is static. So if we hit save, it's gonna give us the results at that moment in time only. It's not gonna change. We're not gonna be able to edit it later. It's just a snapshot, one-time list. Always updated is gonna give us kind of continually updating each time that we sync with your database, it's gonna find, if it finds people that match the list that are not on the list, it'll add them. If people that are on the list no longer match, it'll pull them off. So this area below is where we build out the list criteria. So this is a dropdown, but also a text autofill. So typically when you're first starting out, you'll use the dropdown and scroll and kind of go through your options. But then as you get more familiarity here, you will you can start leveraging the the typing autofill and so you can find specifically what you're looking for so the bold headers here indicate where 
uh, kind of information and criteria are stemming from. So here fish activity are things are things that are occurring in here fish or things that are not. Uh, and we'll go through some of the specific criteria to highlight in a little bit here. The candidate, this would be information on the candidate record or entity. So you can see these are uh, organized alphabetically. All of your custom fields that you're bringing in for each entity will also appear here. So that's become something that you can search. The placement would be placement-based uh, information that's associated to, to a candidate. Again, a bunch of options. Same thing with submission. And then you can also do note type. You can have ed education available here as well. So you have a lot of options, lots from different entities. The most exciting thing probably right off the bat is you could create cross entity searches. So you could pull in a candidate criteria, a placement criteria, and a submission criteria all in the same search and get some really powerful segmentation um, that's pulling from various areas inside of your database. So um, just wanna highlight and kind of go through some of these uh, criteria that can play a really important part. Uh, so here fish activity, like I mentioned, is things that are either occurring or not occurring inside of here fish. Uh, the has activity, so with pretty much everything that you're searching for, you can search for if they've done something, if the person or things done something, or if they have it. So both sides of the coin become important. So we're going to use has activity as our example. When we go here, we see we have a bunch of options that we can choose and select from. So you can really um, kind of segment based on activity or behavior, or if it doesn't occur. Again, this is, can be a powerful filter or trigger. So let's, we'll just go to click, because I think that's a, that's a good example. So this would be, you can specify if somebody's clicked on any email, or you can look at just specific emails within, a, within the specific automations. So you can select just specific ones if you want to. Um, what you're also able to do is if you want all emails from a specific campaign, if you click the title of the campaign, it'll pull that all in. And each time that we add criteria, you'll notice our number changes. You'll get a real time value of uh, the, the number that matches the criteria that you're selecting. So you're able to kind of build that out quickly if you like. And the URL contains, so this is where you can specify if a specific link gets clicked upon. So if you have four or five links that are inside of an email, you can use this URL contains option to find specifically people that have clicked or haven't clicked on one of them. And then you can even put a dynamic date element in to find people or haven't within the last X amount of time. So at, to add another criteria, we just hit the add condition and we choose whether we want it to be an and or an or operator. So an and operator, all of the and conditions would have to be true for someone to be able to match. Whereas an or operator, if any of the or conditions are true, then the person uh, would, would match the list criteria. So going into candidate fields, uh, to give you an example of a, a date field, which is pretty neat. Um, so with a, a date field, you have the options to do before or after, which are kind of standard. You just pick a date and a time. Uh, and if it's happened before or after that, that that's uh, kind of what will get returned. The less than or the more than, this is the option where you can bring in a dynamic kind of rolling calendar period, which can be really powerful. So for example, if we put more than 30 days ago, we'll get a little text description on um, what that is, is doing, but it's an always updated list. So if we were to revisit this list a week from now, it's going to be slightly different because it's a different, you know, more than 30 day period. So if we're a week from now, you know, it would, it would show us, uh, you know, seven days later, um, which can be a powerful feature where you can build that kind of automated dynamic element with date conditions. Now, if you want to add another condition, you're going to be forced to pick and make sure that your operators align within the same condition group. But if you want to utilize separate operators, this is where you can do the condition group, which is down here below. And this is where you could have separate conditions, and then you could utilize any condition if you wanted to. So um, another interesting part here with, with any of the candidate fields, or really any of the fields that we're bringing in, you have the ability to find if, if something has a value, and specifically, you know, look for certain values or doesn't have a value. But you can also find if there's no value in the database. So does not have category, for example. That would, that would give us all the candidates that don't have anything in that category field, and they'd also match this criteria up here. So that can be a powerful aid and tool for you 
when you are um, kind of doing any data hygiene, or trying to figure out if there's missing links inside of the database. And you can do those for any of the fields that are on the candidate record, sales contacts, really any of the fields that are on, in this area here. So the placement information, said so you, can, you can really get robust and search things. Um, you know, for any kind of text type fields, you can do the is or is not, you can do starts with, again, you can do if it has a job title or doesn't, but then you can also do contains or does not contain. So if it contains any part of that string, you can go through. You have a lot of options as far as how to configure, how to build that out. And probably in submissions are gonna, are gonna flow in kind of a similar way where you're able to kind of highlight those specific submission entity informations and fields. And the last thing I'll just kind of highlight here as far as conditions go is you can do a lot of robust things with notes. You can, you can look for a specific note author if someone has a note and doesn't have a note in a certain time frame when their last note date is, but you can also look for specific note types. Um, so you can look to see if someone has, you know, one of your specific note types from your dropdown. You know, if, if you pick a note type, then you can also specify within a certain time frame. Um, you know, so you could make sure that, uh, you know, somebody in this example has that outbound call in the past 30 days you know, for example. And then whenever you create this, you would just save your list. And again, you'll get kind of a, a real time uh, idea of, of how many things or are, are, are people match your criteria. You would save your list, the list that you create will start syncing. Typically, we sync a, a few hundred um, kind of every, every few seconds. Um, so that you see that number kind of continue to climb up until it, it's, it's all set. And you've successfully created your list. So then you could kind of create more if you like. And then to utilize a list, you would go to the automation area. You would go uh, into a specific automation or build out an, an automation that you, know, you want to build from, from scratch. We'd build out our automation and then to attach a list inside of an automation, we would just go to this automation enrollment area. So we can select existing lists that we've already created and built or we can actually create a new list and it'll pop up that same list mode. So you actually can do this right side inside of the automation area as well. And then you, would you can just add the list over to the right hand side and handle it that way. So that's a rundown on the list area inside of Herefish. Let us know if you have any questions.